Oh my! What's up everyone, Pritch here, and in today's video, I'm gonna help you guys beat the final meta boss, Suwon. This dragon fight comes at the end of a long string of events, but I'm just gonna cover the actual boss fight because that's where so many people are struggling. Alright, let's dive right into the fight so you can start unlocking those turtles. Alright ladies, time to go from zeros to heroes in 20 minutes because that's all you're gonna get to kill this water dragon. The vast majority of the mechanics can be summed up as such. Don't stand in the giant red and yellow circles that look like they hurt. Because they hurt. When you see a break bar, everyone needs to use CC abilities to nuke the giant bar. When you see a giant squiggly yellow circle that's pulsing, stop greeting DPS and move your fat Norn butt out of the circle, then dodge or jump the shockwave. At 80%, the boss will leave and the green circle mechanic will occur. Now, green circles appear and you need to have at least one person stand in each green circle, otherwise everyone takes massive damage. Some of the people standing in the green circles will randomly be selected and turned into wisps. Wisps get launched to the bottom of the map and have to climb all the way back up to the top of the tower. Think of it like Pac-Man and you gotta eat the orbs to climb back up. You can jump six different times and you descend very slowly and each orb that you collect refills your jumps. The people turned into wisps have two minutes to climb to the top of the tower and during those two minutes, everyone else has to defend against all the adds. It's here that we meet our first Void Thornheart who shoot out projectiles that knock you down. I highly recommend focus targeting those and bringing some stability and also using your eyeballs and not standing in yellow circles. This mechanic doesn't end until either your two minutes are up or every single wisp is back on top of the tower. And yes, this eats away at your 20 total minutes to kill the boss. Also, if the adds destroy the crystals, you instantly lose the fight. This mechanic will be the reason that 99% of your groups fail this fight. It only takes one wisp to hold the entire fight ransom for two minutes. So please, for the love of all that's holy, if you're a wisp, sprint to the top of the tower. Now once the mechanic ends, the boss will do an arena-wide wave attack, and the only way to not die is to hide behind one of the crystals that was formed from doing the green mechanic. If you don't get right behind the crystal, you will die. Once the crystal is gone, it's back to whacking away at the boss, and here is where you can try different strategies to see what works for you guys best, because there's still going to be the leftover adds that you need to deal with, including the thorn hearts. The three options are kill every ad, kill just the thorn hearts, or ignore everything and focus the boss. We chose to ignore everything and brought some stability to deal with the thorn heart knockdowns. After 80%, the boss will start getting a shield buff on her where she's going to take greatly reduced damage and the only way to remove this is by killing her tail. Her tail will always be on the opposite side of her face on the arena. It's extremely important that whenever the tail is up, stop everything you're doing and go kill it before going back to the boss. Once the tail is gone, go right back down to beating the boss until you get to 60% health. At 60%, the boss will make a water ring and spawn adds. Kill the adds and pick up their essence until you get Dragon's Blood Spears for special action keys, then smash those until the break bar is gone. Then, you're going to get a new special action key and two legendaries are going to spawn to the east and the west. Use your special action keys to launch yourself up to avoid an arena smash from the boss and split into two groups because you need to kill those legendaries within 30 seconds of each other. Once both sides are dead, use the same special action key to launch yourself back to the main platform and continue fighting the water dragon. It's here that I want to point out two incredibly different attacks that the boss does because it affects your positioning. The boss has two different yellow attacks that fill up half of the arena. The first attack is just a plain yellow attack where she dashes across the map and repositions on the other side of the arena. When you see this attack, start rotating across the arena. The second yellow attack has yellow arrows inside of it, and this is just a wave attack. The boss will not move, so this will not require any repositioning. Time is precious, so learn to rotate depending on which you see. The final mechanic to talk about here is bubbles. When the tail is up, it'll occasionally target random people for the bubble mechanic. Everyone targeted will get a purple diamond over their head and then get trapped in a bubble that you have to damage to escape. 
The bubble won't kill you, but it will waste a ton of time for you and your allies. So when you see people get trapped, try to drop some damage their way to get them out faster. Once you get the boss to 40%, you do the exact same green mechanic as before, except there are triple the amount of green circles. Not only will you need triple the amount of people to complete the wisps, but you will have way less people up top to defend. So if there's ever a make or break moment for the fight, it's right here at 40%. After 40%, the only new mechanic is whirlpools, and these are extremely simple. If you get caught in a whirlpool, DIE! Literally drowned, waypoint, and then go right back into the fight because wasting time trying to save you guys is super inefficient. So if you get caught, do the squad a favor and die as quickly as possible and then res yourself. And on the topic of resing, remember guys, always res your sexy green catmanders. At 20%, do the same ad killing into Essence Pickup, into Dragon Spear Throwing, to break CC Bar, and then split off into three groups because now there are three legendaries that spawn in in the Northeast, Northwest, and South, and they all need to die within 30 seconds of each other. Special action back to the platform, and there are no new mechanics for the rest of the fight. Alright, those were the mechanics and how to beat them, but now we need to talk about individual skill for a second, because just doing mechanics isn't enough here. 20 minutes is a really short amount of time to complete this boss fight, so let's talk for a second about what you need to bring to the table if you want to succeed. First, you need to be in a squad with a commander, and you need to be in a subgroup, and each subgroup needs quickness and alacrity. You're going to treat this like a raid, because you need to be pumping out raid damage numbers to succeed here. That also means that if you aren't a support role, you need to be playing a very high damage build. And for that, I always tell people, like for raids, that you should be able to kill a 4 million health golem with 25,000 DPS or higher to be pulling your weight in the damage category. And the same is going to go for this meta event. If you're newer to Guild Wars or raids or endgame content, I'll have a link in the description to Snow Crows, which is an awesome website that shows you builds and rotations for your classes in order to deal really high damage. The final thing is on top of food and utility buffs, you also need the offensive and defensive jade buffs because they give you 150 of every big stat, which is basically mandatory to pump the damage required to win this fight. For those that don't know, those offensive and defensive buffs can stack up to 9 times for a total of 1 hour and 30 minutes, so grab every battery you see and constantly apply both to yourself before the boss fight. And that's going to wrap up the video, everyone. Once you're voided out, dodging every circle, nailing every mechanic, and slaying your sixth Elder Dragon, enjoy your 30 chests and the start to a beautiful turtle friendship. I hope you guys enjoy, and I'm sure new strategies are going to emerge for this fight. But I just wanted to share with the community what worked for us, and hopefully more people are going to be able to find success in this new content. As always, everybody, I love you guys, I appreciate you guys, and I will catch you in the next one. See ya!